Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown, and Le'Veon Bell together created one of the most lethal trios the NFL has ever seen. And nicknamed the Killer Bees, these superstars were supposed to be the centerpiece of a new Pittsburgh Steelers dynasty that rivaled the one in Foxborough for the AFC crown. But after a contract dispute with Bell and a trade request from AB, their plans came to a screeching halt. This is how the Killer Bees killed the Pittsburgh Steelers. The beginning, 2013. It all started when the Steelers drafted Le'Veon Bell in the second round of the 2013 NFL Draft, adding him to a very young offense that was looking to take the next step. And while Bell was the team's rookie of the year, the story of this season was easily a young Antonio Brown. AB, with the help of Ben Roethlisberger, was cementing himself as one of the best wide receivers in the entire NFL. And thanks to the departure of Mike Wallace in the offseason, he managed to post nearly 1,500 yards for the first time in his career. But sadly, all of that production didn't translate to wins immediately as the Steelers started the season 0-4 before regathering themselves after the bye week to ultimately finish 8-8 eight and, eight and miss the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time since the turn of the century. As the offseason rolled around, the Steelers lost some key pieces in Evander Hood, Emmanuel Sanders, and Lamar Woodley, but they managed to fill all of these voids with guys like Mike Mitchell, Cam Thomas, and LeGarrette Blunt. Next up was the 2014 NFL Draft, and the Steelers had some glaring needs at a few key positions that needed to be addressed immediately, such as inside linebacker, which they filled when they used their first round selection on Ryan Shazier. In addition to linebacker, the defensive line and receiving core needed some help as well. So Stefan Tuitt and Martavius Bryant were exactly what they needed for a playoff run next season. The Ascension 2014. In their eighth season under head coach Mike Tomlin, things started to change for the Steelers when they were viewed as an offensive dominant team for the first time since their inception in 1933, scoring an organization record 436 points. Another notable piece to this season was that Big Ben was now playing the best football of his entire career, and his supporting cast definitely made his job easier too. 1,400 yards from Bale and 1,700 yards from Brown helped propel Pittsburgh from the 20th ranked off offense in 2013 to the second in 2014, a meteoric rise that no one could have predicted given their dominant defensive history. In terms of team success though, they improved their win total by three games to finish 11-5, winning the AFC North Division for the first time since 2010. Moving on to the playoffs, the Steelers saw a team that I'm sure they didn't want to. When the rival Baltimore Ravens traveled to Heinz Field and harassed Ben Roethlisberger all night, sacking him five times and forcing him to throw two interceptions which led the Steelers to be defeated 30-17. At the start of the offseason, the Steelers community endured a bittersweet moment when they lost arguably the greatest Pittsburgh defender in their history as Troy Palomalu decided to hang up his cleats which effectively ended an era for the Steelers defense. In free agency though, Pittsburgh didn't lose much, and they didn't gain much either, but the few moves they did make added depth to a budding young roster. Heading into the 2015 NFL Draft, Pittsburgh desperately needed to bolster their pass defense after finishing in the bottom half of the league last season, so they opted to give opposing quarterbacks less time to throw when they drafted Bud Dupree 22nd overall. They also addressed the secondary in the second and fourth round, and another quality addition we just have to mention was the selection of tight end Jesse James in the fifth round out of Penn State, an absolute steal. The missing piece, 2015. Despite number 43 not being on the opening day roster for the first time since 2002, the Pittsburgh Steelers entered the season with high expectations after making three trades to help bolster the roster. Everything was good at the start of the season, but things quickly got off track when injuries to Big Ben and Le'Veon Bell shook up the team. And while Roethlisberger returned from his knee injury, Bell suffered a season ender after tearing his MCL. So with a missing piece from their offensive trio, Martavis Bryant was forced to step up alongside AB as the team shifted to a more pass-focused offense. Ultimately, Pittsburgh still finished with the top three offense and a 10-6 record even with an injury-riddled season. Moving on to the playoffs, the Steelers traveled to Cincinnati to face off against the Bengals, and this contest was a sloppy, dirty, hard-fought game that saw Big Ben and AB head to the locker room early with injuries, and both teams penalized the combined 18 times for 221 yards.
Conference, and somehow the Steelers managed to squeak out a win 18-16. The following week, in the divisional round against the number one seeded Denver Broncos, Pittsburgh found themselves in yet another hard-fought contest where a field goal was an accomplishment. Fast forward to the fourth quarter when the Broncos dominated and defeated the Steelers 23-16. And after the game, nearly the whole Steelers team was reportedly in a locker room crying after fighting through adversity all season. In the offseason, the Steelers were caught by surprise when two-time pro bowler Heath Miller decided to retire after a decade with the organization. They also relinquished left tackle Kelvin Beecham, defensive tackle Steve McClendon, and linebacker Sean Spence. But on the flip side, they added Ladarius Green and Ryan Harris. And while these players aren't the biggest names, they were still serviceable veterans. Once the 2016 NFL Draft came about, the Steelers' needs remained the same when they drafted defense with five of their seven total drafts draft picks, proving that they were committed to helping their legendary offense. Sheer Dominance 2016. To start off the season, the Steelers' offense was relatively healthy despite the suspension of Martavis Bryant, but at least they had their star running back, Le'Veon Bell, who was easily one of the best backs in the league. So when the team went 4-5 and five over their first nine games, everyone was shocked. Pittsburgh then decided a trade needed to happen, so they shipped off a six-round pick to the division rival Browns in exchange for Justin Gilbert. And from that point on, Pittsburgh flipped a switch to become a top 10 ranked offense and and defense. They closed out the regular season on a seven game win streak, winning the AFC North with an 11 and five record, securing the AFC's third seed for the playoffs. In the playoffs, the Steelers hosted the Miami Dolphins. And in this game, they basically started the game with a 14 point lead when AB flew past the defense for a 50 and a 62 yard touchdown. And from that point on, the Miami Dolphins were finished as the Pittsburgh Steelers cruised to a 30-12 victory. The following week in the divisional round, Pittsburgh traveled to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. And this game was a wild one when the Steelers became the first team since the 2006 Colts to win a playoff game without scoring a single touchdown, winning 18-16 thanks to Chris Boswell's record-setting six field goals. The next stop after defeating the Chiefs was Foxborough to play Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, who have long been dominating in the AFC and this game was no different when they dominated the Steelers all night to win 36 to 17 and after this game the Steelers knew if they wanted to become the best they needed to make some changes free agency, the Steelers lost two big pieces of their defense, but due to drafting well the previous years, they knew they would be just fine, and adding Joe Hayden and Tyson Alu-Alu sure didn't hurt. In the 2017 NFL Draft, the Steelers knocked it out of the park after having very few needs and were able to finally draft the best player available. TJ Watt, Juju Smith-Schuster, and James Conner all came from this draft. Super Bowl bound. 2017. Heading into 2017, the Steelers were arguably the most complete team in the NFL. And many experts even selected them as their Super Bowl favorite. And the Steelers didn't disappoint, dominating any and every team that stepped foot on the field against them this season. They were also seen as a top five team on both sides of the ball as well, finishing third on offense and seventh on defense. The defense was arguably more impressive than the offense this year for the first time in a while after leading the league in total sacks with 56, which helped propel them to the number two seed in the AFC after finishing 13-3 on the season. In the playoffs, they had faced off against the Saxonville Jaguars, and this game was an absolute shootout that sadly ended in Pittsburgh being defeated 45-42. Following the loss, the Steelers were criticized by their fans and the media for looking past the Jaguars and anticipating the rematch with the Patriots in the AFC Championship. In the offseason, the Steelers were pretty quiet in terms of free agency, but a contract dispute was brewing after they couldn't agree to a long-term contract with running back Le'Veon Bell and decided to franchise tag him for a second straight season. Bell wanted to be compensated more like a receiver who are still making more money than running backs to this day, and the Steelers disagreed. So the friction grew between the two sides as Bell refused to sign and play under the franchise tag. But he wasn't the only player in the headlines for the Steelers. Antonio Brown had a 
string of incidents this offseason as well. In the 2018 NFL Draft, the Steelers shocked everyone. After having one of their best drafts of recent memory, they had one of their worst, as they reached on players all weekend, and many were beginning to question the decisions made by the front office. Issues brewing? 2018. After an offseason that kept the Steelers in the spotlight, they remained in it after Le'Veon Bell kept his word and did not play for them in 2018, which aggravated most veterans on the roster who saw him as their brother, but he didn't care, he just wanted his money. And thanks to James Conner, the team was able to manage without Bell and started the season 7-2-1. But after week 10, things started to get ugly as they lost 4 of their next 5 games. Fast forward to week 17, where the Steelers had a slim shot to make the playoffs after allowing the Ravens to steal the division. But Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown reportedly got into a heated argument which led to Brown being benched for the final game of the season. And of course, if you know anything about AB, he wasn't happy. He reportedly stormed out of the team facility and ignored all contact from teammates, coaches, and front office representatives after they failed to make the playoffs. It's rumored that Brown's frustrations stem from Ben's praise of the second year wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster and feeling like he should have been voted the team's MVP over him and heading into the offseason things only got worse for the Pittsburgh Steelers. At the start of the offseason, AB demanded a trade from the Steelers, stating that they didn't respect him and he even went on Twitter to badmouth Juju about his game-losing fumble to the Saints in week 16, which he felt ruined the Steelers' chances of making the playoffs. And after all his antics, the Steelers had no choice but to trade the All-Pro to the Oakland Raiders, which created a massive void in the receiver room. To add fuel to the fire, the Steelers also lost Le'Veon Bell and Jesse James in free agency. They added a few pieces in Steven Nelson, Dante Moncrief and Mark Barron, but nothing that would erase their losses. In the 2019 NFL Draft, the Steelers traded up to select Devin Bush, who was going to fill a noticeable void since the tragic injury suffered by Ryan Shazier. And after that selection, they drafted a couple steals in Deontay Johnson, Benny Snell Jr., and Zach Gentry. Complete Collapse? 2019. At the start of 2019, the Steelers offense was relatively brand new as Big Ben's main returning weapons were Juju Smith-Schuster and James Conner. And after just five games, they were struggling when they held a 1-4 record for the first time since 2013. And to make matters worse, Big Ben was injured in a Week 2 game against the Seattle Seahawks and was forced to undergo surgery and would miss the remainder of the season. So the same quarterback that Roethlisberger said they didn't need when they drafted him was now needed to start for the Steelers for the rest of the season. And Mason Rudolph played decent until he was knocked unconscious by the Ravens and hit in the head with his own helmet by Miles Garrett, which forced the Steelers to basically shut him down for the remainder of the season for his own safety. The Steelers ultimately finished 8-8 eight and eight and missed the playoffs again. And the one bright spot of this season was the defense, who absolutely dominated after trading a first round pick for Minka Fitzpatrick. But even they couldn't overcome this terrible offense. The Aftermath in the wake of losing Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell, the Steelers were forced to rebuild their offense, which also included the quarterback position. As Ben Roethlisberger came back from his elbow injury, a shell of his former self, and retired at the end of 2021. Over the next few drafts, the Steelers acquired Kenny Pickett, Najee Harris, Chase Claypool, and George Pickens, who are seen as the future of the Pittsburgh offense. The defense, on the other hand, is ready to go, with arguably the best young defensive core in the entire league locked up for years to come. So it's safe to say that the Pittsburgh Steelers won't be down for long. But what do you think? Will the Steelers make the playoffs in 2022? Thank you all for watching and I'm out.